Wow. How many of you know, how many of you sensed all day long has been pretty amazing? Yeah, yeah we, we had an amazing worship this morning, and then Norman Marcy blew it out, shared some pretty profound things, and we just, it was staggering, really. I'm glad, I hope we got it recorded. It's going to go into the intergalactic cloud of amazement. What the? The new book. What the? Oh, and then Peter sharing, and then, then we had a, we, had, we were taken to school and a clinic on the kingdom in the marketplace. How many of you thought that was amazing? Mixed with prophetic ministry, mixed with all kinds of stuff. That was so rich this, today. That was amazing. Wow. Praise the Lord. So tonight, who knows how powerful. We just, just be expecting the Lord. How many of you, by the way, just sense the Lord just even in that prayer moment tonight? How many of you sense that? Okay. One time, you know, I didn't understand that when my spirit gets captivated by the presence of the Lord, I'd just break out weeping. And I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a fairly, you know, even keeled person. Say what? <laughs> More than you think. But it was the first time it happened to me, I stepped up to meet John Wimber, who was the founder of the vineyard. Well, he wasn't the founder, but he took it over and led it. And uh, I just lost it. And, you know, lubricants were coming out of my nose and bouncing on the floor. And, and I was like, I couldn't get composure. And, and it was like there was no rational reason for me to be losing it and keep losing it and losing it. And he goes, oh, it, you're just being lubricated in the Holy Spirit. Just let it happen. And so I've come to be aware that when that buttery, creamy lubricant of the Spirit hits my spirit, man, I know that something's going on. You like my lingo? You can at least understand it, okay? Creamy, buttery, frothy. Thank you. We'll, we'll come up with some more. Yeah, work with me, Andrew, because I know you can. All right. Um, one of the big values that we have as a family uh, to, to emphasize this connecting of our hearts in a way that transmits the life of Jesus. So there's a connection so s substantial that offenses can't tear us apart. That, you know, that irritations and, and disappointments can't tear us apart because we value unity more than we value being right. Okay, very important. I mean, it doesn't mean that we don't want to be right, but it just means that, that, that truth exists for love. And we don't want to beat each other up because we don't happen to agree on something, but we need to agree on unity at a heart level. We need to learn how to walk in love like this because the world's waiting for that. It's seen a ton of religiousness. It's seen a ton of division. It's seen a ton of hypocrisy. When it meets the true and real substantial love, I think the world will take, a, take note and see Jesus. Okay, so we've got to learn how to do this. And a big part of our tribal gathering is to cause people, help people open their heart and connect them and to capture this, this atmosphere of heaven called affection. And it's really, really meaty. It's really big. It's, it's bigger than emotion. It's a supernatural reality that we can walk in toward people even we've never met. And God's been working a long time to raise up spiritual dads and moms that, that carry a lot of the DNA of heaven in their heart. They carry a lot of Jesus. And they got there the hard way by a lot of yeses and a lot of dying to themselves and yeses to Jesus and obeying him, you know. And we got one of those patriarchs in our midst. We got a couple of them, several of them, but a special person in our midst. His name is Dr. Sam Matthews. You can call him Sam. And Sam is, is really, truly one of those guys that lives the life of servanthood and, and humility. And he's, he's, he's been walking with the Lord a long time. And uh, he oversees a network of churches, and he planted churches, and he's been to the mission field many times, and 
one of his big passions and is, is right along with our passion, which is a transfer of God's ways generationally. There's no reason why you have to make all the dumb mistakes I made. If you'll just yield to the Jesus in, in older people that have walked a certain way, you'll save yourself a lot of grief. It's called generational transfer. And you can build your life on the, on the backs and the platforms of people that have gone ahead of you. And Sam is one of these fathers in the spirit. Uh, one of the things he saw was the importance to transfer God's ways to the next generation. So he started uh, schools, grade school, high school, and then God had him start a college out of a spirit of intercession and prayer and intimacy with the Lord. And they worked and worked and worked and prayed and prayed and prayed and got all the highest credentials, the accrediting credentials that make it a meaty and substantial degree diploma. And so that the marketplace would recognize that degree. And uh, a friend of mine, Randy Clark, who's a revivalist, this Randy Clark, he said, I want to start a seminary, but I wanted to be accredited. And I want to teach people to be thinkers of the word, but doers of the supernatural, which is an unusual seminary, believe me. And um, so he came to Sam and said, can I bring the seminary underneath Family of Faith College? And Sam said, absolutely, this would be tremendous. It would be a dream come true. Well, we've sensed the same invitation from the Lord to start a college um, that would tr have an highest accreditations that, you know, the American Educational Institution gives. But with our DNA of intimacy with the Lord, of the supernatural, of learning discipline, learning leadership, learning character, but coming out of a four-year degree with a degree, but being a substantial servant leader. So I've come to Sam, and I said, Sam, could we come under your fathering love? Could we come underneath what you've built over 25 years? And he says, oh, my goodness, Tim, that would be fantastic. And so we're, we're striking up this unity tonight. And I wanted, I said, Sam, would there be any way that you could come and meet our leaders and share your heart? And, and let them love you and sense the Jesus in you and, and know that something is going on that's bigger than just, you know, books and textbooks and, and papers and diplomas, that something holy is going on. We basically want to mentor the next generation in how to be awesome. Not that we're all that awesome, but we want to help you become more awesome than us. But by the time we're done, we want you to be able to have a diploma that is recognized by everybody and it makes you marketable in the currency of the world. Yeah? yeah? So would you give a round of applause and warm love to Sam Matthews? Yeah. <laughs> Here he is. <laughs> oh, thank you, Sam. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. That's a pretty big introduction, isn't it? You know, anybody that's done anything, I looked at Norman Marcy and said, that means I'm old. <laughs> that's what you communicated to everybody. But I am, and I'm, and I'm proud of it, and because uh, it means I'm still here to get done what needs to get done. Amen? And I know you guys are excited about that. I'm excited to be here with you. I had the privilege of meeting Tim and Janet several years ago now. It's amazing how many have gone by. and uh, But we, through Dr. C. Peter Wagner and some of those conferences, two guys that I met that Tim knew, and Tim's getting ready to start what you guys are here living out before this all existed, and he asked those guys, who do I need to talk to if I'm wanting to start an apostolic network, and it turned into the Rock Tribe. Everybody go, give me a big yes, amen. Yeah. All right, and, um, but anyway, he flew my son, Daniel, who is getting ready to turn 36 in August. But he flew us up to Kansas City, and we had the opportunity to spend a day with them and just share our story, our pilgrimage. And it was inside of him, excuse me, to uh, do what God had put in his heart. And it was very obvious, the apostolic calling. I sensed that, and that began uh, who you are. And I've watched it develop through the years, and I got to come to, the, I think, the very first tribal gathering of at Estes Park, and what a beautiful place, and to be a part there. And then we've seen each other at some meetings through the years, and periodically would call one another, and we would always say, 
we really need to do more together. We need to, yeah, we'd all agree, and it was there. There's kind of like, you know, there are some people in life that you meet, and you think you've always known them, and you don't talk to them for a while, and when you talk to them, it's like you never not talk to them, and you guys know what I'm talking about. Well, that's the kind of relationship we had. So a year ago or something like that, when I started seeing on Facebook that he's starting the All Nations University and hooking up with this group for accreditation, and I thought, ah, really wish that we could have worked together because I've always felt there should be a working relationship and not really knowing all the definitions of that, but just feeling there's always been something there. And then so I would see the things he would post and all the gatherings that you guys have and the guests that he has coming in. I think, yeah, there's something there. And then here a few weeks back now, he called and said God really had spoken that he needed to put some things on pause. And because he keeps running into people like Randy Clark and Tom Jones. You guys love Tom Jones? Yeah. Yeah, he's a great, great man. And uh, and then he met Steve and Sally Wilson, and Steve and Sally Wilson, Jason met them down in Brazil, and uh, Steve and Sally are, in, in our network, we call it, uh, ap- they're in an apostolic company, and it's a group of international apostolic leaders that have insight and influence and oversight in many nations of the earth, and we all function together, and we're getting ready to meet here at the end of this month down in Barbados. We'll probably see the ocean and never touch it, but well, you know what I mean by that. But anyway, because uh, we're always too busy to do those things. But you guys have a fun mentality that I, somebody ought to lay their hands on me that I would get, okay? <laughs> <clears throat> so anyway, so but it, uh, it all got started, and what, he kept running into people talking about the family of faith. That's the name of the ministry that God gave me years ago. Family, that does something inside of him, as you know, because I've heard it how many times? Hundreds of times already since we've been here these days. We've just barely been here a day, haven't we? Yeah. Oh, you've been here longer than I have. But anyway, so i got to move on fast. So, uh, but, so God told him to put it on pause, and he called, and as he said, yeah, we just felt, yes, God's up to something very, very strong. And it's very good. Here, in the last couple of years, I've made a lot of trips. Tom Jones into Shawnee, we into Pennsylvania and into Colorado, and Steve Wilson with him, some in Brazil meeting. And and we just really felt, because Randy had this desire to start a seminary, I'll not explain. Tim mentioned that a moment ago. But education has always been in my heart to train and raise up laborers, all right, and to see people brought up and generations affected. And and so I knew that when God had to start the K through 12, uh, that we would train people and send people to the mission field because God gave us a mandate, said you'll orchestrate a worldwide penetration of the gospel. So you have to train people. And if you see things in Scripture that's supposed to be transferred and imparted, there are certain things and ways that God wants things built. Is that right? And that becomes this DNA in a culture. Well, anyway, all that started happening. What excites me, and I love seeing as you guys got these little children up there, and the transferable thing, because, it, again, it just flooded me a moment ago. Because now, my son, as I say, is getting ready to be 36. He was 35 years ago. I was watching him dance one day to a David Ingalls song, I'm of the Seed of Abraham, and he's dancing, and I'm clapping with him. And, and God said to me, he said, Sam, you can make him into anything you want him to be. He said, because you're a Christian, he's probably going to be a Christian, and he's probably going to embrace the reality of the Christ. If you were a Buddhist, he would be a Buddhist. If you were a Hindu, he'd be a Hindu, et cetera, et cetera. And he said, I want you to spend your life giving and imparting into people to see them become what my kingdom wants them to become. Amen? And one night in a six-month period that I refer to as being locked up with God, God reminded, began to show me the glory of the Lord that would fill the earth and all the things that would be transpiring and things that would unfold. And it was an incredible journey. And, and then what God said to me, he said, Sam, you're like David. And he said, you're a man of war and you're a man of bloodshed. And he said, I'm going to use you to prepare and prepare and say things and lay things in foundation. But it's going to be your sons like Solomon that's going to absolutely see the glory. I heard somebody saying that today in a conversation over here at this side of the building. That it's not, and, and you, know, you know what my response to that? When I saw it, God allowed me to see it. And then he said, you're not going to totally see it. Somebody else is going to finish it. You're going to see some of it, but you're not going to see all of it. I screamed, No! 
Because the depth of my being of self-centeredness and selfishness and what I had seen that I wanted to get. And I cried out to God for forgiveness and said, God, I will spend the rest of my life giving myself to other people to see them become what the Spirit of the Lord wants them to be. Because there's going to be others that are going to finish this race. There are going to be others that are going to accomplish this. And anyway, God's a good God. Amen. So anyway, he's traveled all over the world from that standpoint, my son. But... K through 12, and when we started that, we were doing, Norm and Marcy were just over in France, but in 1989, we were doing the first Protestant Christian school seminar in the nation of France. There was a new Christian school over there that we had our lives crossed, and, and God had us go over there, and we began to share about the Christian school movement. Since then, that, that school, that couple... The other leaders that we met, and we had a network of churches there that's been planting churches and schools. It's just grown exponentially, and it's just an incredible kind of thing to watch happen when you start entrusting to people. And like all of those young leaders 30-some years ago, they were all first-generation Christians. They were all Roman Catholic, obviously, never knew the born-again experience. But I've watched these men and women be raised up to begin to change a nation further to the gospel of Jesus Christ. They planted schools and churches all around the French-speaking world. It's very exciting to see that happen. But while I'm standing there in the first session of that Christian school seminar, and I'm talking about Christian education and the vision, and what happened, while I'm talking and I continue to talk, I have this vision. And next to the properties of our church, there's a whole kind of a, it's a little bit higher, but a hillside. It ended up being 52 acres. I didn't know how much, but runs for about a quarter of a mile. And I saw, God showed me this hillside, and he said, you must go back and start a university. And he said, you have three years to do it. Because he said, where are these young people going to go? If you believe what I've shown you in the Word, and you're raising them up in this culture and this DNA, like your children, where are they going to go? Because if you, if you raise them up in the apostolic, you raise them up with this oversight, you raise them up in the heartbeat of God, the intercessions that God allowed to be birthed in me through a man called Reese Howes, his son Samuel Howes. I mean, all of those things. He said, where are they going to go? There are a lot of great schools and institutions. That's not the point. I've had people say, why don't you? There's other great. Sure, there are great ones. But what is it that God's asking us to do? What is it that he's wanting to do to bring the body into something where the body's never been before? That's what it was happening. He said, you have three years to start this university. I'm stunned. So when I get down, I share with my wife, her sister, and her husband, who's an elder in our ministry, and they are. And so as I shared that with them, then I realized something. Three years would be the first graduating class of seniors in our high school. I didn't think about it, but God had it. Where are they going to go? So the point becomes this. God knows exactly the right timing and the right ways to let things happen. So we started the college, started the process. I, in 1975, had finished a residence on a doctoral degree. My wife became terminally ill. And in the midst of that whole experience, our lives were changed. I filed, filed for three extensions to finish that doctorate because we went through 18 months of her getting right to the point of death. But our lives were totally transformed. She was raised up. Some of you have met her, but she was raised up. And, and, and I never, ever didn't uh, ever miss finishing that degree. Because they told me, either do what you were going to do and has been approved or forget it. And I thought, man, I can't. What I'm set up to do and approved is so boring and dead. I can't possibly do it. And that's what I told this, the dean. I said, I can't do that. It's, that's dead. I want something alive, man. This is where I've been living. And, and he says, no, you can't do that here. And I said, okay, bye. Never did I ever regret not finishing that degree. But there came a time where God then, in, in 1992, told me, he said, go back and finish your doctoral degree because, you, because of what you're going to do in the nations of the earth. Had no idea it would be as big as it is today. Do you understand? But again, the obedience. Went back, asked to get in. They said, nobody's ever come back after that long uh, being out, never gotten back in. Nobody's ever asked. But anyway, God by His grace did it. We finished it. And that's all history. But we started. We made all those accreditation things. And my vision forever has been to go right on through the doctoral level. 
Then we started, Steve started working with Randy Clark and going to some of his, and Tom Jones started coming in for some of our leadership meetings. And anyway, it just became a real mixture, and we started realizing, wow, they, they want to do this thing with their, the, the master's degree so, and have it in a spirit-filled kind of environment and to, to have the DNA that doesn't exist. And one day Steve Wilson made a statement. He said, there's not another seminary like this with the mixture coming together with the intercession and the prayer and the revival and the awakening anointings that are there. He said it doesn't exist. And I never had thought about it like that, but it's true. And you kind of alluded to that a moment ago. Well, it was in the heart of Randy, and it was in my heart to see these things happen. And so the partnership thing came together, and we were able to work it out. We're calling it Global Awakening Theological Seminary because of the reality. It's in the family of faith, all right, and it's in under a school under the family of faith. Uh, we're letting and, and putting some of Randy, Josh Clark, Randy's son, is on the board. We're going to add some more. But it's a real coming together. And when all this started happening, then there was a prophetic word, of somebody that none of us know, that we found that said that there were two generals that were going to come together. They had their armies coming together. They got off their horses. They got on their knees. They joined hands. And the prayer awakening movement, the prayer Revival and awakening and the prayer and intercession movement were coming together to go to a whole new level of intercession to cause the sustaining power of revival and awakening will cause the kingdom to be manifested in the earth. And we thought, that's what's happening to us. You know, that's what God's doing. And here in another whole group, God's prophesying it. They're not experiencing it, but God is doing it. Well, what can we say? Anyway, we worked this out. So we came back, incorporated Family of Faith University. Well, when we started the accreditation process, they said you can't do that because you're not big enough. You just have one school. You have to have more than, than one school to be a university. So we had to change it to college, which was very frustrating to me because God said start a university. All right. But with the starting of the seminary, which they approved, when they approved that, then we have two schools. You have the undergraduate. You have the graduate school. Thus, we can change our name to Family of Faith University from Family of Faith College. And I just found out today that it officially changes on July 15th this year. Is that good? Yeah, 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 yeah. So reality becomes then, as Tim started talking, because you guys have a very unique DNA. Do we agree? In fact, you're just downright weird. And uh, so, but we like that, all right? So, and we don't want you not to be weird, so that, he doesn't want you not to be weird. So he said, Sam, can we stay weird? Like, no, he didn't say weird, but can, he wants his DNA, which the, the whole urban emphasis, the inner city, those things, the, the uniqueness of this affection and this love of God and all of these things, we want that. And years ago with our network of churches that have come together, it's not just churches relating to a network, it's network of network. And we've been believing and we have seen apostolic networks come up out of our people that we have been sons and daughters, and we're, they're, they're expanding all over the world, you know, and all through Asia. And those we have thousands of churches across Asia, and it's just incredible to see the things that are happening. But anyway, so what we found out, we talked with some of our staff one day on conference, and Tim was on the phone, and we're trying to figure out how do we make all of this work. And what Elaine, who's now the provost, was our academic dean, but is the one that has the brains to see all this come together. And she's a part of this. She was sitting there, and we were listening to Tim, and we were sharing things. And all of a sudden, she thought, well, why can't we just bring All Nations University? We will need to change it a little bit. Tim's talked to some of you. to College. But if we made them into a college, just like we made the graduate school into a college, a school, and then we have our undergraduate, then it could absolutely be something that could stand on its own with its uniqueness. It's like having certain focus. Like in our undergraduate stuff, we have church ministry Bible emphasis and church ministry education emphasis because we train Christian school teachers and church ministry worship emphasis. Well, this can be a church ministry with this urban in, 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 in emphasis and whatever term, other terminologies that we may want to use, and it can all flow together, but it can be something that can be immediately covered. We can work it, and it's just an incredible thing to be able to do. Amen? It's absolutely incredible. And we didn't ever realize that the vision of networks of networks working together could ever work like this in the educational thing. But it does. And the, the educational accreditation process is laborious. 
okay? Very, very challenging, and we've been challenged on many occasions in many ways, and I won't share all of that maybe on another occasion, but boy, I tell you, because we were faithful and we were ready and prepared at the right time, we had to fight a lot of battles, but the realization is that God did it, and now we're poised to absolutely be able to see people educated throughout the earth, and it's just a wonderful, wonderful thing that is happening. So if you're interested, and I know you are because he's leading you to be interested, and that's the way it works, but it's something very special. So it's a great honor to be here with you in these days, and I just really thank God for this opportunity. And your reality becomes this. I was captivated in 1975 when my wife became ill and then we fought for those 18 months by an experience of being picked up in the spirit and taken from my living room in Tulsa, Oklahoma to the nation of Wales and being and stood in a building that was the Bible College of Wales founded by Reese Howells. And as God, as I was there and God said, one day you will minister at the Bible College of Wales. And he said, the intercessions that I have begun in you, that I began in, in Reese Howells, am continuing in his son Samuel Howells, I will continue in you and others until the every creature vision is fulfilled. All right, the every creature vision was given to Reese Howells on Boxing Day. Didn't know that term until I read the book, but the day after Christmas, Boxing Day, when at 3 a.m. that morning, he was awakened and pacing the floor, just repeating over and over, every creature, every creature, every creature. And God challenged him, said, do you believe I want to see every creature touched and all the nations and the people groups of the earth? Do you believe that I want to touch? Yes. And he said, okay, can, I be, can you be responsible to see that that happens? Personally responsible. He took on a burden that caused changes that had an intercessory group ready to do what needed to be done in the defeat of Hitler. And if you haven't read the book, I encourage you to read. It's incredible world events that were changed. But the missionaries that have been sent out, out of that school through the decades has been unbelievable. And it's so awesome at the numbers of people whose lives have been transformed. Well, that night, there as I was on my knees and then picked up and taken out of that room, the realization became this. I was gripped with that every creature vision. And God said, I will never let go of you, and I can't let it. I think on it day and night, day and night, every moment. I don't even sleep that much because this thing is stirring inside of me that this gospel of the kingdom is going to be preached in every nation as a witness until the whole world is touched with this gospel of the kingdom. So every creature. So anyway, that's where we live. That's where we breathe. That's why we're here in this endeavor. And I just really thank God for the way that God put us together many years ago. And then through many events, have us already at the right time and with the right things, the right circumstances, the right credentials, the right anointings to be able to do what has never been done in the earth before in, in theological education. Amen. I'm excited. Oh. All right. All right. We may be looking old on the outside, but we as fighters on the inside. You have no idea, people. All right. So uh, I had a, a similar experience where I was, I had been gripped by God's capacity to bring the kingdom to whole cities and regions, even nations. I had, a, I had open visions of watching really messed up cities get kingdomized starting with the poor and orphans and then moving, sweeping into the leadership of the city. And I saw the arts getting redeemed. I saw the marketplace getting redeemed. I saw godly kingdom business leaders that would, would get inventions that in their dreams. And I saw heaven coming to whole cities and capturing the heart of the city and Jesus becoming the voluntary elected mayor of cities and the leader, the king over a city. And when I came into Laramie, God spoke and said, this is going to be a city on a hill, and I'm going to kingdomize this little town, and I'm going to capture this university. And I'm going to deliver it from the spirit of humanism and secular materialism. And I'm going to take these raw, wild, and crazy Wyoming people, and I'm going to turn them into wild and crazy kingdomized, kingdomizers. They're going to love Jesus, and they're going to do things they never thought possible. And he said, you know, and so I'm like, what in the world? Why Laramie? It's windy. It's cold. It's, it's out, you know, it's, I can't figure out whether they're cowboys or rock climbers or, or you know, 
you know, mountain bikers. I can't get it. Like, what are these people? They're, they're, he says they're eclectic. They're all of it. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to do this in, in Laramie. I'm going to do it in the Rocky Mountain region. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to literally take the West back for myself. And I'm going to turn these wild pioneers. I'm going to take these wild pioneers. And I'm going to redeem their exploratory pioneering spirit. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to knock the individual isolation right out of them. This self-made, isolated individualism. I'm going to turn them into a, 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 a warring tribe, a band of brothers and sisters that are a family and an army. And it, out of love, not out of co coercion, not out of manipulation, not out of political spirit of, you know, of, of intimidation, but out of love and service, out of coming underneath and winning people's hearts, they're going to turn a city. And he said, so you've got to create a credible learning experience, a credible training experience that's holistic, that's experiential, that's spiritual, that's relational, because what we become is largely due to the relationships we form and the experiences we get to have. It's not just the books we read and the papers we write and the information we regurgitate in a multiple-choice question. It's what we get to do in life that forms and shapes our, comp our competency. And our competency is done the hard way in the context of safe and loving opportunities to, to, to make mistakes and to not be, you know, Good. Praise the Lord. We all grow from, from learning and trial and error. And so I've, I've come to Andrew years ago. I said, Andrew, there's going to be a day. I'm t telling you, there's going to be a day when God's going to send a breed of young people to Laramie. And they're going to be hooked by wilderness. But they're going to start seeing the kingdom. The wilderness will hook them. But they'll see Jesus in the kingdom. And Andrew, there's going to be people. And Josh, I said, Josh and Amy. There's going to be people that are going to be sent here for a minimum of four years. We've got to eliminate this transience, this I'm, I come, I go, I'm in, I'm out, I can take you, I can leave you. We've got to stop that business. People have got to learn to lock down and learn to be committed, loving folk. Then, in the setting of commitment and love, their, their characters form because under the harness of the confrontation is when you grow. Most people that are transient, they wiggle away from the pressure and the stress when God's trying to galvanize their character, and then they bolt and run because, you know, they don't like it. And it's like, no, you've got to get under there and deal with it until you get the character of Jesus formed in your life. So stick around for a few years so that the work of the cross can get down inside of you and you can die enough to be meaningfully useful. Because that self-absorption, and I can do what I want to do when I want to do it, it's got to go. you got to learn to be on a team and in an army. And I said, there's going to be a day, Andrew. There's going to be a day, Josh and Amy and Jessica. There's going to be a day, Bob and, J and Diana, when God's going to send us vibrant young people and vibrant old people that they're sick and tired of retirement. It's like, it's like one too many golf games, and they're choking. You can only catch so many fish. And then you got to go back to something kind of meaningful. Now you can keep golfing a little more. You know, you can keep fishing, but you got to stay in the game. And there's old people, young people. And they're going to come, and they're going to get groomed and trained to bring the kingdom to cities and regions and nations. It's not just the urban core. It's whole cities. So you got to know about the marketplace. you got to know about the media. you got to know about the arts. You've got to understand church history. You've got to understand sociology. You've got to understand science. You've got, to, you've got to understand and think like a kingdom person so you can articulate the gospel with power to the intelligentsia. And we're going to win them with power and love, but we're going to also know what we think and why we think it. And so I, I tell you what, it's just gripping me. And people, I believe, are going to relocate here and they're going to come here, and you're going to think, Laramie, and they're going to endure the wind. They're going to endure the cold. And you know why? Because there's a white hot fire of God's presence. And they don't care. They don't care. They love it. They love it. 
because the harshness of the, the intensity of this environment plus the front range, we want to do the same down the front range, the intensity of this will forge their hearts to be able to go into hard places in the nations and not be prissy. If you know what I mean. Yes. All right, so this, this is not just a cute idea. This is a kingdom mandate to equip the generations. And when I met this wild and crazy pioneer called Sam with a southern accent, with a Baptist background, but has a wildness in his heart, I knew this is a guy that I want to I walk with. I want to walk with this kind of guy. And we, we, we went ahead and just... I said, Sue, why don't you get some things down on, on a website before I think we've been officially approved. I don't even know if we've been, like, officially approved. But in my mind, we're approved. Yeah, we're in. I know some board has to say something. But we've got the website. We've got your picture on a website. <laughs> like, 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 I thought, this could be bad. Like, I didn't give out the domain name because I thought, I don't know if we should do this, but I just couldn't help myself. <laughs> I got excited. So I needed a visual aid, and so Sue, God bless Sue Redding, where are you, Sue? She worked hours tirelessly to put this together, and it's a supernatural website. So Sue, do you have those cards? Do you have those cards? Why don't you, if you have, if you're just interested in the idea of educating the next generation, Raise your hand, and we actually have a domain name, and we have a website now. It's called allnations.college, allnations.college. And Sam's pretty picture is up there, and the information is there. And I want to pray a minute night right now for the, for, the unlock, for the launching of an All Nations College. And this is going to serve not just the Rock Tribe, it's going to serve anybody that has this revival passion to see cities reached. It's not just for us. It's for anybody. It's for the, it's for the people of God. But we want to get them in the context of relationships so that we can deal with the inner conversations that come up under pressure when they go out. So we'd rather deal, we want to deal with the dark side, the false self, when the, it's an observable and monitorable atmosphere. How many of you know what I just said? In other words, inside of every person is a false self just waiting to hurt somebody else and to do something naughty. Why not, in a, in a white hothouse environment, start dealing with those fleshy issues so that on the mission field or under more intense battle conditions, they don't implode by being naughty. Okay, so that's what we want to do. We want to de-orphan people and make them smarter and make them more like Jesus. Is that asking too much? <laughs> All right. I think it's God, personally. <laughs> and we want to expose people to people like Wesley Campbell, who's here tonight. Yay! So, anyway, we'll get him. We'll get to him. So, we're going to pray right now. Janet, come up here with me. And, and if you could come up here, Norman Marcy and, 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 and Josh and Amy and our leadership, our APES team. Just jump up here. Mono, Lori, Josh and Amy, Andrew, Jess. Andrew, Lori, Joshua, Imano, Lori. Uh. Sue, you come up here too. You come up. Yeah, come up here too. And hook arms. And we'd like you to kind of like raise your hands to heaven. And I want you to pray a prayer with me. And I'm going to ask Sam. I'm going to start off and then Sam, you close it. And we're just going to pray for the Lord to anoint this vision to, to, to equip and train future disciples slash leaders that are going to bring the kingdom on earth. Father, in the mighty, oh, Wesley, you kind of, Sam, Wesley, come up here. Yeah. And, uh, and, and Pamela, Ray. yeah, Ray and, oh, Ray and Emma, you're on the APES team. What are you doing? <laughs> Do, I'm sorry I didn't say this in Spanish. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. Sorry. <laughs> Father, oh, no, that was love. He, he loved that. Yeah. That, was, that was affectionate <laughs> bantering. There, oh, yeah, no, no, that was affectionate <laughs> bantering. He loves that. Right, right. He'll get me back. Right, right. <laughs> Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we're, we're believing for the transfer of the generations. Yeah. Amen. Amen. 
We're believing in the transfer of the generations to make disciples and leaders that can bring the kingdom on earth. Father, we're asking for an anointing to make disciples of all nations. And so one day, the people that come out of all nations, college, that is a part of the Family of Faith University, part of Global Awakening, that our students, that our trainees, that our leaders can literally disciple presidents of nations, heads of corporations, leaders in the field of, of science, technology, and art, and media, and civil government. And I pray today, Lord, for a kingdom-minded people that think holistically about bringing heaven to earth. And we ask that you anoint us with the power of the Holy Spirit and fire in Jesus' name. Samuel, Hallelujah. Shikara kusi shikromo sihla kolake na ha nihe kaha si kohane kolake na davara soko shikere kala hakoye na ba unse remono kuchiklau zabra kuse se remono kuchala na kumsa nda unkala hata ngotagi. Nike ne osa ya no 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 lo kulalo ne he ne or siaklau kin sekle zike rone krebi si shele mon kulala rimon sokoyari. For my children, I say to you that I have looked. I have looked for the centuries for the day in which I could find the people that would look into my eyes and look into my heart and feel that which I feel and know that which I know. To see my children brought, my body, my bride, into the fullness and the power and the glory and the majesty of the hour. Yeah. For I look upon you and I find those. I find you. I find you ready at this moment, for this hour, for this time. So I say unto you that look up. Look up and see the heavens filled with all that I would give. With those of my kingdom, with those, those that have gathered around the great cloud of witnesses, gather and see the great understanding of the great host. For I have declared I am Jehovah Sabaoth, the Lord of hosts. And you shall see that your eyes shall be opened, and you shall see the host. You shall see all that is meant by the host. And you will see that I am the Lord, that I am Jehovah, that I am the great Yahweh. You shall see, you shall know, you shall understand, and you shall receive. For I am declaring that I am coming down I am bringing down upon you that kingdom. I am bringing down upon you that which will cause all things to be seen, all things to be known, and that every eye shall indeed behold the glory and the majesty of my Son, as he shall absolutely fill, fill to the fullness and see his body filled up. For he longs to see it come into that full measure, that stature of his fullness. Know that you have seen him, he has seen you. I see you this day, look up, and I shall fill you full of the richness and the power and the majesty of my king and his kingdom. Wow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Praise, the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much. Uh, wow. Wow. You guys okay? Was that an amazing moment? Wow. Praise the Lord. Whew. Let's just stand up for just a second. And before I introduce Wesley, I just want you to stand up and just raise your hands. And let's just minister love to Jesus. And just, Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I love you. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice to worship you, oh, my soul, rejoice, take joy, my King, in what you hear, may it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ear. 
Worship with the angels tonight. Just worship a little more. Worship. Love Jesus. Holy and daily 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 and